Hello everyone, I'm continuing my speed run videos, um, which I hope will educate you. And we're gonna get the rating up eventually. Um, D4 played here. I'm gonna stick with standard openings. And the idea of these videos is we're gonna try to run our rating all the way up eventually, but I'm gonna tell you typical ideas that mistakes maybe you're making and in the rating range 800 to 1000 and what you can do to try and avoid those mistakes and become a better player and we're just going to get up all the way hopefully to grandmaster level at some point so um in the opening stage of the game and i think people overrate the opening they they think it's really really important well it is important but as long as you play good decent moves control the center get your pieces out you'll be okay now i want to castle king side so in order to do that i want to move my pawn move this bishop but ideally i don't want to block my bishop on c8 in with that pawn so here i'm going to simply move this one out and i'm just thinking the best way to develop all my pieces now my opponent there has played one of these common errors that we see quite often uh, and i call this an unnecessary pawn move you shouldn't make pawn moves in the opening unless they have some sense how does that help white developers pieces so i'm just going to continue playing here e6 i want to get my bishop out get castled now i could move the bishop here that seems like a slightly more aggressive square but i might get hit by c4 c5 i'm not doing anything special at the start i'm going to castle like my opponent and now i want to get one more piece out we've always got to look at our opponent's last move and see what his idea is he's playing very quickly and he's only good piece is this piece, so I'm going to move my last piece with the idea of swapping off uh, my opponent's only good piece. And we can already see I'm a little bit up in development here, right? He hasn't developed these guys, and now that I'm castled, now that I'm developed, I can start thinking about what plans to do. Now, the center of the board is very important, and we have a symmetrical structure here. But one problem my opponent has with the, having the knight here is that he's blocking his pawn in. And I want to try and now get hold of the center of the board and try to take get more pawns in the center of the board. So I'd be very happy if he takes there to take there. My opponent has now lashed out, but this is just a blunder. And he took only a couple of seconds to play this move. Obviously, when you make a move, you've got to count how many pieces are attacking that square. Well, I've got one, two. He's only got one defending. When your opponent plays a move, always have a look, see if you can capture. Um, that square. I'm now going to put a rook on an open file, increasing the pressure. I've got to be a little bit careful of my time, but my opponent is already in a horrible situation. He's now moved himself into a pin. We look at the pin piece, the knight, and we simply think, how can we increase pressure on that pinned piece? Now, I could move my queen, which would be very one very good move, but I also like knight to e4. Using this central square, you see my opponent used a similar central square earlier. And I'm just going to do this to increase the pressure on the pin, attack my opponent's queen, and it's going to win material. So here I will take the knight. I'm going a piece up. In that position, I have one, two, three pieces attacking that square. My opponent only had one, two. So again, if we have more pieces attacking the square than our opponent has defending, we can win material. And um, I'm now going to try and hopefully show how to convert these positions. And often the simplest way of doing this is just to make exchanges i want to try to get this knight out at some point but then my bishop might be in trouble i'm not worried about him taking my bishop even though i double my pawns i get this open file so i'm going to play this move to guard my bishop so i can move my knight we don't shy away from complications when we're material up but we do try to avoid giving our opponent the initiative and generally in a game of chess i will try to do that anyway now, whenever your opponent makes a move, always look at the piece they moved and try to see what they're doing. I don't understand that move at all, but also look for loose pieces and look for possibilities to create threats. And in this position, I can see that by moving the knight here, I check, I win the queen. And yet again, I have to say in this, you know, in this gray boundary, probably up to a thousand people are starting to play chess and it's the most important thing to do is not to drop pieces. Um, know some basic opening ideas, play some sound moves, but keep your eye op eyes open to when your opponent plays a move. Make sure that what they're doing is not attacking you, but also 
see if you can win the piece they've just moved, if you can create a threat to win it or take it off immediately. Um, we can have a very like quick look after the game um, to see uh, what my opponent did wrong. He might now time out. This is a way that a lot of bad losers generally play. The one thing I would like to mention is that every game I win, my opponent gets the rating points back afterwards. This account has been created so that I don't gain points at the end. My opponent will be awarded points back, so I'm not sandbagging or anything like that. They're all getting the points back after the game. So they're not actually losing points at all. And to be fair, they're getting a chance to play a Grandmaster. That shouldn't, you know, and hopefully learn something if they are a subscriber to the YouTube video. But I really do hate people who time out. Yeah, it's so frustrating, you know, uh, and we've seen this a lot. I mean, one thing I've actually realized, uh, I have to say quite often, is that the lower rated players are, the ruder they are. <laughs> is that something you guys have? Uh, I, I generally think, is, you know, grandmasters are very well behaved. Uh, they have very good manners and, and generally, not all of them. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. But lower rated players, they, they, they seem to be just ruder. As in, um, well, timing out their time, rage quitting, just being rude, having a lack of certain manners and decency. And um, I don't know why that is. You would have thought they'd like to learn, they'd like to get on to the next game and not waste a bit of their life as well. But I'm going to have to rant for another two minutes now. Um, one thing I, I would really like to see on chess.com, which I think they have, and you can see he's disconnected here. He'll auto resign in 30 seconds. Well, that's good. So, very bad loser. Um, and um, he played uh, quickly and badly. And if you are going to play blitz chess and you're lower rated, one thing you really need to do is not play without thinking. <laughs> if you want to get better at chess, you have to think about every move. And um, you can see he got timed out there. Uh, so we can get on to a next, another game now. So just, just like pick a time limit where you can actually think, you know, don't pick a time limit where you're just going to panic. Now in this video, I I'm not going to play e5. I'm actually going to play the French defense, which is the first opening I ever played. We're just going to switch it up a little bit for each opening. The French defense allows white to get a big center, but you get this nice pawn chain in the middle of the board. Now with the advanced French, whenever you play any opening, the most important thing to do is just to know what you're trying to achieve so in the, and what your opponent is as well. Now, the problem with the French is you're a little bit cramped, but you're very solid and you have to try to break out with pawn breaks to start with. Your two main pawn breaks is c5 first and occasionally f6, but f6 can weaken your king. But c5 is the main move because I wanna hit the back point of my pawn, opponent's pawn base, which was d4, so I wanna put pressure on one point in my opponent's position. And in the advanced French, the one thing you try to do is to attack this point. So I now want to bring my pieces out. We still have to develop. And my knight has a natural square here, attacking that square. And I want to try and keep the pressure up against that point. My opponent defending, defending that square. And now there are two main moves. And again, this is just opening theory. There's bishop d7, which develops a piece, gets ready to put a rook on the open line. I might play the more thematic move here, queen b6. Now you don't want to bring your queen out early, but in this case it's very safe and I'm trying to just stick with my plan of increasing pressure against d4 and again whenever you play an opening like I say you just got to know what you're trying to do I'm trying to win the pawn on d4 and develop my pieces my opponent here is offering an exchange of queens and one thing I know in the French defense is that well generally Black likes the exchange of queens. Why? Because black is more cramped because of this pawn here. And with that pawn on e5, white has better attacking chances against my king when I castle. So I really don't mind exchanging queens, but I got, I got to think, do I double my opponent's pawns and open up his rook? Or do I allow him to double my pawns and open up my rook? So if I take here, he will have to take the queen because I've got one, two, three attacking this square here. He's only got one, two defending. So capture, capture, capture. He will capture back. And then I got some interesting moves like knight b4, but 
you can go king b1. I quite like the idea of taking here first because I don't think his file is too much problem. So I'm now gonna take on d4. We didn't have to take on d4, but he has doubled his pawns. But maybe more importantly, I've got this b4 square and I can hope at some point to use this square because he can't now kick my piece away. But I can't see it. I, I mean, this is like one of those moves which looks very tempting, but in actual fact, it might be a little bit artificial. Artificial threats, you wanna create threats in chess, but you've got to consider, and this is another common mistake at this level, and a little bit higher even, your opponent's most most likely and best response. And then you've got to decide, does it help my position? Well, if I go knight there, he can gain a tempo with a check, and then he can even castle. If I come in, he moves his rook. So I'm actually now going to go back to thinking, how do I develop my pieces? I'm not doing anything special, and I want to try to attack this point. Remember, this is the whole point of the opening. So I'm going to move my knight to this square, to try to move my knight to f5 and then to try to attack this pawn and I then will get my bishops out. Generally you develop your knights before your bishops but as you can see in this game and the previous game before I'm really not doing anything amazingly clever. I'm sticking to general principles. I know what I'm trying to achieve from the opening. I'm talking to my pieces something you shouldn't do in a tournament hall. Oh yeah, hello bishop, where should you move bishop? Where do you wanna go? You might get sectioned, um, but I'm just trying to think where my pieces wanna go. And I'm also looking at what my opponent's trying to achieve. Now, does he wanna go knight there? Well, I can spot, and this is where obviously experience and being a higher rated player will help you, that if I go knight f5, he goes knight here, I can flick in a check and castle. I can also maybe move my king, but this move, it might be a bit harder for those of you who are lower rated to see what is a good response against knight b5. But like I say, luckily I can see I can check and castle. The reason maybe I've seen that is because I was thinking of move my knight here and I saw my opponent had the same idea, check and castle. And already we're trying to hit the base of the pawn structure, that pawn on d4. and. I would assume knight here is a pretty decent move anyway. Um, bishop here does stop me winning that pawn, but bishops are quite important. I'm now going to break the pin. I have to be a little bit careful of my time. I'm threatening to win this pawn again. I'm developing a piece. If he takes on c6 structurally, I don't really want to take with a pawn unless I'm going c5, which might be stopped by knight a4. A4. I feel bishop takes is safer and you know pawn takes was interesting trying to use that pawn to again hit the base of his pawn structure. My opponent's playing very well for his rating. Okay he's going here anyway trying to come into this square. I'm looking at what my opponent wants to play and I'm going to go pawn here. He can't take that pawn because my bishop's defending and this is something a lot of players at this level don't do. They don't look at what their opponent's trying to do and they don't stop their plans. And again, I think my opponent's playing very well. I'm developing my last piece. Okay, it's not doing a great deal on this square, but if g4, I can support my knight coming there. And the next thing I'm gonna to try to do, I think I'm gonna use my king in the center because the queens are off the board. I'd never dream of putting my king in the center if the queens are on the board. And now I'm gonna think about my second pawn break, but first of all, I'm gonna play h5 because I wanna cement my knight on this square. And now I wanna start using my pieces. So the bishop in the French is not a very good piece. And I'm gonna take off that knight because it defends his important point. I'm putting my rook on an open file, keeping this rook defending that one. I'm going to take that rook off because I can see my other rook comes here, controls the open file. Rook to the seventh rank, the best square to place a rook. And this knight stops his knight from moving. His rook can't move because he loses bishop. If his bishop moves, I take this pawn. So he can't move anything. And notice how I'm thinking about all of his moves. I'm improving my pieces. And now I've induced a blunder. And the blunder is that I can safely take this one with check. And everything in my opponent's position is now gonna drop. I'm gonna take here. And we can see by, again, playing relatively simple ideas, I'm increasing the pressure on his critical points. By playing these relatively simple ideas, I've induced him 
into making a series of blunders. But my opponent played very well there um, for quite a lot of the game. He played a very, very nice game. The important points, know what you're doing in the opening. I'm playing the French defense. I get this solid position, but I've got to create counterplay. C5, we've got to know that which square are we trying to attack, this square here. Later on, I try to develop all of my pieces before I try to think of an attack to play. So I bring all my pieces into the game. My opponent played, actually, I think, a very good game. If I was him, I wouldn't have swapped off this bishop. I would have defended that pawn in a different way by moving my knight there. I do like the fact that as the game developed, I get the bishop pair here. Whenever he moves his knight, my bishop can come into the game. And the thing is here, I don't have any weaknesses. You could say this is weak, but not really, I can defend it. But my opponent has this long-term weakness because he can never defend that pawn with his pawn. So I consider myself to be slightly better, but very well played for my opponent for most of the game. Knight e2 allowed my bishop to come in and he's still holding his own here. And around about here, I do have an advantage because this pawn is weak and I have the open file. And maybe he could have held on better here in this position by playing rook to d1. And how would I have tried to won this game? Well, I might now played the second pawn break, putting a bit of pressure on the center. I might have tried helping my king move. I might have used my pawn. But it's certainly not clear-cut win. Okay, right, now we come into another game when I have the black pieces. We're going to get another chance to play the French defense. And you, when you're learning chess at this rating, what I recommend you do is have a look at various openings, maybe the game's top players, and decide which middle game positions you like. What kind of positions do you like? Now, at this rating boundary, the advanced French is very popular. It's only as you get higher that white generally plays other things. But you've got to decide, before you get really involved with an opening, what positions you enjoy. Do you like this slightly cramped position, but where you have counterplay against d4, or do you want to have more freedom for your pieces? If you want to have more freedom, you shouldn't play the French defense. But as we can see, there are ways you can play this opening. Once you decide upon an opening, really commit to that opening and learn it as much as you can. Don't try to learn other openings. My opponent is pinning my knight, um, but this is not a good move because this is my opponent's best minor piece. Why is that the best minor piece? And these are the kind of things you need to know. That bishop on d3 can be incredibly strong against the black king. For example, if I have a castle, there's a ready-made attack against the king side. I'm gonna do what I did before. I'm simply breaking the pin on that piece. And this is another common mistake we've seen before. It's an unnecessary pawn move. That has no effect on the position whatsoever. A complete waste of time. And there's even a little tactic here I can use. Knight takes e5, which wins a pawn immediately. Bishop takes bishop, knight takes, pawn takes knight, and now I take here. And what is that pawn doing? Don't you've What you've got to be able to do in chess, whenever you play a move, you've got to be able to explain to a friend or to yourself even why you played that move verbally. So if I was a coach here, I'd ask my opponent, why did you play h3? What was the reasoning behind that? And if, my, if the person I'm coaching can't explain it, then it's normally an error. So think like that when you're playing. Try to explain to yourself, why did I play that move? And try to be proactive, not negative, not defensive if you can. Now I'm always looking at my opponent's last move and trying to think each pawn move makes a weakness. And in this position, this move weakens this diagonal. So I'm gonna bring the queen over to h4 to take advantage of that weakness. And my opponent now has to move the king. And I'm now, I'm going to look at ways to win material and I can take this pawn with check. Yes, I'm moving my queen again early, but my opponent has no pieces developed, so I'm very safe. Now, I could take here, but I'm looking for something a little bit more now. I could now go check, king here, queen a4, checkmate. And I'm going to play this anyway because it gives my opponent the possibility to go wrong. And if the king goes here, it blocks in the bishop and the knight. So even though I had a good move, always try to look for the best move. Have a think, is there something better? And I think my opponent's king is reasonably okay on c2. So she's found the good move. And now 
If I go check king here, check king here, I take their check knight e2, and you can see here this is where I'm using a bit of calculation. Now I could go bishop takes e2, queen takes, queen takes h1. You can see this is why I'm a bit higher level, but I'm now thinking I really want to checkmate this king. And I'm going to use a little tactic here, which is a very strong tactic. I'm looking at my developed pieces, my queen and bishop. Can I do anything with these pieces? Well, this check is very tempting, but I can't see a checkmate after check king back here. The king can come back. So now I'm going to look at bringing in reinforcements. If you can't, when you're attacking, create the win with your developed pieces, look at your other pieces. And funnily enough, I see my opponent's kings on a dark square. By playing g6, I'm trying to bring in a reinforcements. Now, this might not even be the best move. Maybe this queen takes g2 at some point was the best move. Knight here, I take the knight. But my opponent did another typical mistake, didn't look at my last move, didn't get into my mind, didn't think, what am I trying to do? If she'd have done that, she would have moved the queen so the king can move to that square where the queen is. But instead of doing that, my bishop, my reinforcement can now come into the position there and I give checkmate to my opponent's king. So um, my opponent play bishop b5, that's a little bit of uh, not understanding the opening so well, realizing that this is actually her best piece and she doesn't want to swap it off. The next mistake was playing a move which you can't really explain, you need to be able to explain your moves, unnecessary pawn move. And then in this position, um, my opponent needed to try and get developed like knight e2 and castled. This move doesn't help that, and it's another weakness. And the problem here is h3 is really bad because if the pawn was on h2, my opponent can now play g3. And then in a very bad position here, the final mistake was not looking at the opponent's move and thinking, why did my opponent play g6? Well, now the bishop has a root out, and she could have fought on with something like queen e1 and then king here. You've got to fight as much as you can. Okay, we've got the white pieces. Now, in the previous videos, I've always played e4, my first white today, but I'm gonna go for the London system. I think the London system, I don't mind, I don't care what people say, is a very good opening to play when you're starting out in chess. Stage one is put your pawn here, and that's your main pawn, and then you develop your knight, you wanna develop your pieces, and you wanna develop your knight to f3. I'm gonna play the London system in a very basic way and the bishop to f4. This is stage one. You get your pieces out quickly. Stage two, you want to reinforce this pawn here. So I want to play like e3 and c3, and I want to develop my last two pieces, minor pieces. So I want to put my bishop here and my knight here. Now I'm not sure I like my opponent's move for black because he's put a bishop on b7, and then he's played a move which immediately blocks that bishop in. So we still got to pay attention though. And which move order am I going to do? Well, I want to still have the opportunity of castling as quickly as I can, meaning I want to get my bishop out. So I'm going to move my pawn so my bishop can sit behind the pawn here. And now I've got to think, well, if my bishop goes here, c4 is a bit annoying. It doesn't have a good square to go. But have a look at my opponent's last move. And I've got to think, is there anything that's wrong with my opponent's play. Well, my opponent hasn't developed any of these pieces and this diagonal looks a little bit weak, but if I check immediately, which I think a lot of people would play, you've got to consider, as I said before, your opponent's best defense. And I think bishop c6 is okay because if I take there, knight takes there. So I'm now thinking, well, if I get rid of the knight, bishop takes b8, when I come with the check, my opponent loses one piece that can defend the check. So I'm gonna play this move, and I don't normally give up a developed piece for an undeveloped piece. But in this case, I'm going to do that. Why? Because after this check here, boom, we're already winning. And this is just noting my opponents played this odd d5 move, blocking the bishop. My opponent's played c5, I immediately see the check, but I don't rush in. I calculate if I'd have gone check straight away, my opponent could have blocked with the bishop, but I have to first get rid of the defender 
very logical and now I can pick up the queen with check and I'm a queen up so do I now try to punish my opponent with another check well that would force the king to come back do I open up the queen in this position or do I bring some more pieces into uh, the attack now I could go check king here and try to bring my queen out here trying to go checkmate but I've got to think of my opponent's best defense and knight f6 would attack my queen and go here I'm not going to relax until I've won this game so I'm actually just going to develop another piece because I can't see anything immediate that improves my position if I give a check I think it might just help my opponent bring the king back why do I want to help my opponent do that and now I, I am thinking about opening the position now because I have better development I have two pieces developed and I'm gonna open the position with this move why because I want to open up this line towards my opponent's king and I I want to do this before I castle why because I'm trying to take advantage of this my opponent trying to keep it closed but now I'm gonna continue by opening the position as much as I can as more lines I open the more chance I get to attack my opponent's king on this square and I think in this position now I can come check. Why? Because I can always pick up this pawn now. Um, but more importantly, I think queen here is going to try and go for the kill as quickly as possible. I'm looking at ways to create threats. But remember, if your opponent can deal with those threats, good move in a decent way, then you don't need to play the move. But here, I thought my queen was quite active and good on this square. If my opponent blocks with the pawn, it looks a little bit weird but I also have another tactic here and that is knight takes g6 and again I don't expect you at this rating to see these kind of tactics immediately and um, the more you play the more experience you get and I'm just gonna now basically start picking up um, as many pieces and material as I can we're gonna take here with check I'm gonna take here I've also should note the rook here is loose so I could even have come back and picked that one up in some situations but I'm just going to make sure I don't lose any pieces and keep attacking and I'm looking for checkmate now. Let's bring the knight back in. My opponent will have to walk into a discovered check. That is check. Where does my opponent move the king? Well I'm already thinking about what next move is. Moving the knight, giving a check. Looks very strong. Maybe taking here. Um, I'm going to actually play this check. Uh, I think do we play this? Well, we've got to wait for our opponent's best move, which is knight there. Do I even just castle calmly? I'm going to castle calmly. Why? Because I want to get out of the pin. Why do I want to do that? Because now when I play this check, if my opponent moves the knight, I can take the knight. So I'm going to take the bishop back first. I don't want to risk anything because I'm a queen up. So I don't want to go too gung-ho. That would be silly. Um, I want to make sure that I've got everything covered the best I can. Okay, we'll play one more game uh, for this video in this rating range. And you can see then we're trying to get to the next rating range. So against d4, I'm gonna play d5. We had this um, in the first game I played today. And again, I'm not gonna do anything particularly special. I'm just gonna try to play good, sensible opening moves meaning I want to, before I come up with any plans, develop my pieces, control the center castle. And um, the other thing I wanna think about doing is, well, if my opponent does something peculiar um, in the game, um, then I wanna take advantage of a peculiar move that my opponent maybe does. So if he does something very strange, then um, we will take advantage of that. Now, I'm really hoping my opponent's not just gonna play one move and then time out. Is that, that is, that would be very, very strange um, as as a, a gesture of, uh, oh, I'm, I'm the biggest wally in the world. I'm gonna waste five minutes of your life. It's not time wasted. I get to share it with you guys. And do please remember to like and subscribe to this video. Really important that you do that. If, you know, I, I wanna try to grow my channel as much as I can and I'm only gonna do that if it keeps building up, otherwise I'll give up on it. <laughs> um, and I think my opponent's gonna be a complete idiot here, unfortunately, which means maybe the last game's the last game. One thing I like about chess.com is you can give them a thumbs up or a thumbs down after the game. 
Guess what Vic31 is going to get? Do you think he's going to get a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Another Indian player doing this. Really annoying uh, that this happens, you know. Uh, but there are a lot of Wallies. Maybe he should call himself Wally. Wally or Time Waster 31. Do you guys get this a lot? Do you get this when you're playing? It must be really frustrating. You don't get this at higher level. This is the thing I was talking about. When you get to, I think, you know, sort of FIDE master level, most of the people you're playing are are quite respectful. Okay, well, I'm trying to keep these videos to half an hour. He obviously, at least, at least, uh, at least that I didn't have to wait three more minutes there, thanks to chess.com realizing that these these idiots are there. And um, I hope you enjoyed the video. We didn't get any cheats there. Get in there, son. We did get a couple of bad losers, but hey ho, that's that's life. And um, I hope these videos are helping. Um, just like and subscribe, please, and uh, I'll be back with some more of these. And we're slowly getting our rating up. We've got the next reigned, uh, grading boundary, which is 1,000 to 1,200 uh, coming uh, quite shortly, but probably got one more video in this rating boundary. What have we learned? Don't play unnecessary poor moves. Try to control the center. Look at your opponent's ideas. Take the opportunities when they're there. Don't only play threats if they help your position and always assume your opponent's gonna play the best move. Make sure you know the plans in the opening you plays, play and play openings which suit your style. Boom.